curious wanderers, welcome to my newest video. So in this video, I've gone and painted myself a mermaid because why not? I like mermaids. Um, so yeah, I decided to do a little throwback to the techniques I used or I guess that I learned in my octopus video and I uh, went ahead and applied them here, but I really wanted the bubble effect, so I um, I decided to add a little extra soap to make sure that it would bubble a little better. Of course, I still splat everything everywhere because apparently I'm just bad at blowing bubbles. But um, I really like the result. I think I, I just really like the the little bubbles of watercolor. Even though you have to wait a long time for the for, for, it, for it to dry before you can do another layer. And uh, oh, the <laughs> stray bubble! Gotta catch it. Gotta pop it. Um, but yeah, so here what I'm doing is I'm just blowing the bubbles and immediately popping them so that they make that perfect little circle. And then I spare you the drying time <laughs> and uh, I move right on to my next color. Um, now, I don't know if I did this before or after on camera, but I know at one point, like off camera, I added a little, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I added a little extra soap to it because it kept just splatting and not actually making bubbles, which, which wasn't very helpful to my goal. Um, yeah. Also, since this is taped down to the table, and because I don't want to move you guys around, because that would, that would be annoying, I, uh, I end up running to the other side of the table. Um, and, and yes, that's my, that's my blue hair there <laughs> that you can see sometimes peeking through. Um, to try to get the bubbles, like, a little evenly everywhere, because, um, I'm not really going for like a bubbles floating up type of effect, it's more like I just want a bubbly background um, to complement the uh, character. I like this uh, corally orangey pink color, um, particularly, because I find it makes a little bit of a variety since the main of the background tends to be that like bluish greenish color. So what happens though, because there's like a bit of dish soap in the paint, I find it very hard to, to grab onto the latex. Like, as you can see there, I'm basically pushing off the paint from the latex to catch that corner. And, ugh, I love when there's a large surface like this. It's, like, so satisfying. There's something so pleasant about pulling off this, like, giant coat of, like, <laughs> of the mask there. It's just like, ah, uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> I love it. It's fun. It's my favorite part. Um, yeah. So, as you can see, since uh, it's such a large surface, sometimes the latex might be a little thin, and some of the paint can come through. Now, it's not really something to worry about. Um, I'll show you why. What I do is I take a clean brush, right here, and this clean brush with some clean water becomes your eraser. It's magical. So, I just rub at those little imperfections there, and basically just take them away. Um, I clean the brush every once in a while, just so <laughs> not, I'm not adding to the problem. And then I use a paper towel to kind of lift up that water, because it's still there, it's just extremely diluted at that point, so if you like dab it up with the uh, paper towel, um, you can then just magically erase it. So that's really a, a really helpful trick, so I wanted to point that out. Um, I know it's probably very obvious to a lot of people, but to me, it was very, <laughs> it was a very helpful discovery once I figured out that I could do that. Um, now, for the tail, I didn't want to go like, uh, boring like straight up green, like I do make the rest of the tail a bit of a green, but for the fin, I, I wanted it to, to be a little more, um, like sun-kissed or like just is pretty so I decided to do like a pink to yellow fade um, now f this is my favorite scheme uh, color scheme for when it comes to mermaids I love to give mermaids purple hair <laughs> with a pink and yellow tail uh, it's just my favorite now um, now that I've declared that the next mermaid I do is probably gonna be completely different and knowing me it will be because I'll tell myself that I have to get out of my comfort zone um, but for this video I did not I, uh, since I, I'm still kind of exploring um, the medium I decided to, to go with something that I knew I liked so um, trying to get that paint to blend on the tail is a little hard because the pink that I'm using 
is from that. You, I, I don't know if you guys remember me in another video mentioning this, but um, I got a really inexpensive palette, and I find the colors of the ex of the medium grade <laughs> palette that I usually use um, a little less chalky, and then um, the ones on the uh, less expensive palette are a little more. Uh, dusty, like a little more chalky. So when I uh, when I try to blend them, they don't really blend the exact same way. So it just requires a little more um, playing around with it to uh, to get it to obey um, to my demands. But in the end, it works out. So, um, but I do find it it tends to want to go a little sheer. But that didn't really bother me since I wanted it to be kind of like a uh, almost like a a pretty like a goldfish tail but not not to that extreme like it's still clearly more of a dolphin tail but I wanted that feel like that pretty flowy like colorful uh, end of the tail so I didn't mind if I had a bit more of a kind of a sheer aesthetic because I would imagine that that flesh there of the creature of the mermaid is a bit thinner than like the, the chunk of the tail itself um, so yeah, now I'm just shading the hair and <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, I, I haven't quite decided what my favorite, like on a style, um, I guess everyone, everyone's always constantly looking for their style. Um, now I haven't quite, I don't know, settled I suppose. So I often experiment different ways of doing things, like sometimes I do hair as if it's like a solid mass or like cloth and then I shade it that way. Sometimes I try to give it more uh, individual hair textures. Um, sometimes I give it more like manga S textures. It just kind of, kind of me messing around. I haven't quite, I don't know, I don't think I have to either, but I haven't really settled on a specific style of doing things per se. So here I'm shading the body. I like, um, I tend to like to, to shade dramatically and then kind of um, adjust it afterwards and um, same thing with the tail here now I mentioned this before but I do like to take a brush that has a less paint on it and to go over a to, to go over an area to kind of smooth it out and uh, kind of highlight it by moving around the paint that had already dried or mostly dried there and uh, I like the effect that that gives. It gives it like almost like a shiny uh, highlight to it that I appreciate. Now here I'm building up some contrast. Um, I find that she looks evil at, at this phase of the drawing. And I don't know if she ever gets less evil, but um, <laughs> in my eyes I think she gets less evil later. But right now she uh, she's just like two little black dots of eyes are pretty, are pretty sinister. Um, taunting you. So sometimes I find, this is a watercolor pencil, sometimes I find it's nice to just kind of gently sketch on some uh, some of the blush. I tried to do it with the with the paintbrush like like you would be you would expect to do um, but I find it just kind of spiders or it kind of bleeds into the rest of the face and because the face is so tiny like you can see it like next to my hand like it's not a very large face to, to um, I just <laughs> I decided to use my sketchbook there for reference because um, my uh, my line art is 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 gone <laughs> I couldn't see my line art anymore so I, I wanted to remember how I had uh, drawn her in my sketchbook um, but yeah I find that it's hard on such a small face to, uh, to get that blushing so I use uh, I use the pencil instead and I kind of just gently um, add in a bit of detail with the pencil now they're, they're still watercolor pencil so like they still blend in if you like apply water to them so it's something to be careful of and since mine are, are very very um, are very very inexpensive uh, pencils. They're not very pigmented, so that's the main problem with them. So um, to get any kind of result, you kind of have to really work at them, and it can be really hard on the paper. So that's, if I was to complain about these artist loft uh, 
little watercolor pencils. I, I, I feel they're not very pigmented, but I mean, they're, they're about as much pigment as you get for like a few dollars, but still. <laughs> that would, if I was to complain about them, that's what I would say. Um, but yeah, so here what I do is I kind of emphasized where, I guess where traditionally I would put line art, but in watercolor, I don't always use line art. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I haven't quite decided which look I like better. So here, I kind of did the line art with the colors that I was currently working with, and then I passed over it with this teeny tiny little brush um, that came with my watercolor palette. Yep. <laughs> Just to uh, kind of smooth out the lines so they're, so they're a little more subtle. And then here, as you see, I'm using a little bit of water to kind of blend in that, that blush that I had put down there around the eyes. So that's what's nice about using a watercolor pencil versus like just a colored pencil. And here I'm attempting to add some highlights with the white watercolor pencil, but again, it's not very pigmented, so I guess uh, you can use that to your advantage. The fact that it's not very pigmented means that uh, you can't really overdo it right off the bat, right? But uh, at the same at the same time, for me to get the highlights that I want, it's hard not to uh, peel off that first layer of paper uh, with, with too much abuse, you know. Um, it worked really well on the hair though. I find that like that shine on the hair that I managed to get with the uh, pencil came out pretty good, so I like that. Um, yeah, not per not perfect per se. I feel like um, I feel like I can do a little better with the face. I ended up uh, after this project kind of uh, experimenting with doing just the face like in my free time for practice because you can never really practice enough. And uh, yeah, doing it in a bigger format I I'm fine. It's, it's really the small format that kind of pushes my <laughs> expertise. So uh, yeah, that's the end of uh, this picture. Now um, I, I did mention this before but don't forget to check out my Facebook page if you guys want to see a little more of my artwork. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a good day, guys.